see did you see the thingamajig? Can you still be friends with those whom you disagree with politically? I posted something on Facebook about how um no matter what side you're on or what side you pick, um, you know, we'll still be friends and all that. But and people were like, No. <laughs> like I'm not gonna be friends with somebody who's and, and, and I get it, like to some degree there's there's some um you know, real issues. Um, but I don't understand the mentality of like not doing that. Let me invite my uh, mystery, mystery caller friend here. <clears throat> I want a prize if my predictions are correct. Yeah, we should do that. We should do like a fantasy football type thing. If somebody gets something right, we get them a prize. Usually, yes, uh, so not at someone else's politics around you of your rights and livelihood. Yeah. What's up? What's up, Drew? Yeah, but Alec, I mean, you know where I stand with with certain rights. Like, I think that you, I think your support of abortion robs a whole bunch of people of their rights. I think you're wrong, and I think it's terrible. But I'm not gonna not be your friend because I think that you're doing it probably in good faith, right? So, like, but I do think that's a challenging idea. Like, if I was around in the '60s. And somebody was on the other side of the civil rights struggle. Could I still be friends with them? That's an interesting conversation. <clears throat> Hell again from OK Freaking C. Prize is a reaction. Probably. What's up, Drew? Probably, Damon. Probably. That would make some sense. Um, I just think that it's... Uh, I think that's kind of dangerous to say that we can't be friends with people who are... Uh, uh, differ from us politically. I don't know. But, you know, we'll see. Uh, if you want to call in and uh, help me think this through, if I voted for a representative introducing legislation to legalize race-based slavery, I wouldn't expect you to be my friend. Well, are you saying that there's there's legislation that's like parallel to the transatlantic slave trade in America right now? Serious question. Post those numbers up on, on uh, the village on Facebook, Alex, so that we can record them. Because I, I, I get what you're saying. And honestly, knowing me, I probably still would be your friend. I consider myself a friend of Jonathan Edwards and he owned a slave. You know, I, I, I don't, I don't, and you, you probably would have, Alec. <laughs> What's going on, Mr. Mystery Caller? Um... So I, I, I don't know. I don't know what I would do. I mean, I, I know how I, I mean, and, and some of this, I'm in Maine, right? And so as far as racism goes, there's a certain degree of, there's a lot of things that you just have to overlook if you're going to have relationships with people here. Um, <clears throat> the, uh, comment on, comment under the post that I just put down. Because I, I posted this, um, what's going on, Mystery? I posted this in the uh, Facebook uh, group. So, there you are. You're, you're going to have to be, like, within, like, 10% accurate there, Alec. You want racism coming to Georgia. Fred the Local Villager. What's going on, Mr. Fred the Local Villager? Yeah, I bet you. <laughs> I bet, Alec. I bet. Um... But do you think there's any, like, slavery-level denial of, of civil rights legislation happening that's going to be decided by the votes tomorrow? Has ever our state openly practices voter suppression? Yeah, bro. I know. It's crazy. What are you saying yes to? And, Alec, call, call in. If you're saying that there's slavery-level legislation at stake happening, I want to know. Call me and have that discussion. What's going on, Sarcast? <clears throat> Sarcast, I think you and I probably agree on this, that we ought to still be friends with uh, people we disagree with politically. I definitely think that people of different political strokes can be friends. I'm friends with people of all political stripes on purpose. You have to have different view. Vid, why are your firesides so early in the day? Because I have we have villagers from Europe that basically never get to have a fireside because... It's always like two or three in the morning, their time. 
And we just got done a batch of reviews, and I have an hour between now and when football comes on, so I figured I'd take the time with you beautiful people. <laughs> North Carolina admitted to race-based voter suppression openly in 2016. Yeah, who was who was the one that said, uh, Alec or, or Jonathan, you guys will probably remember, there was one particular one that said that there were just like too many, too many black people who would skew too, too far to the Democratic side so that they... They DQ'd them from voting or something like that. There was one where, like, they openly admitted it. it was it was bananas. If you reject friendship due to political differences, it causes factionalism, which the founders warned us about. Hmm? Good point. I even like you, although you dislike mayonnaise. <laughs> That's funny. So does anybody disagree? Does anybody think that there are certain like moral implications to being friends with somebody who is um, voting for um, moral uh, an immoral piece of legislation or whatever? Because Alec brought up a good point where Alec said, well, would you vote for, you know, slavery? You know, like, would you be friends with somebody who voted to let's say we had slavery up for a vote? Would you be friends with somebody who did that? Um, I think that carries a lot of moral implications. I probably would be. Um, but then that goes into the whole question of what about Nazi? Like if you were, would you be friends? Let's say there was an American Nazi party. Could you be friends with somebody who, um, selected to vote for the American Nazi party who was off like actively advocating for ethnic cleansing? Oh, that's a good question. Easy to be friends with those I don't agree with, but can they be friends with me? That's the issue I'm seeing. That's a very good point. So somebody call me up because I want to talk about that. The impl Could you be friends with somebody in the American Nazi Party? Uh, I don't care about the moral implications of their vote. I care when they think that their vote is their morality. I don't understand that. No, today there's no Nazi Party. I think most of us are saying you have to be friends with people even if you disagree with them politically and even if they vote opposite from you tomorrow. But my question is, does that apply across the board or just in our current political milieu? Oh, I see. Because I'm a Christian, I vote Republican. Because I'm an atheist, I vote Democrat. Lots of people in my own family are strongly against the EU. Pretty a lot of discussions follow. I will admit I have a hard time being friends with the conspiracy theorists. So, Sarcast, I don't really know a lot about how that works. So, like, if you're a European and you're against the EU, you're automatically a conspiracy theorist. Are you far right? Is this the Brexit thing? What are we talking about? Call me up. Let's have a discussion. I have no evidence to support that, but a lot of younger atheists tend to skew more right than atheists have historically. Yeah, I can see that. I mean, Sam Harris is definitely um, no friend of the left, and he's sort of the, the current pope. Um, of the of the uh, of the younger atheist movement, I'm not far right, but I'm right leaning. I think it's fine to be right or left leaning, but we all have to learn to just meet in the middle somewhere. I agree. Right, and that's where the skewing left comes from, or the skewing right. All right, somebody's calling me here. Who is this? Who is this? Who are you? Who's this? It's Peter. Hey, man. Hey, Peter. How's it going, buddy? I'm a, I'm a little sick. You may be hearing my voice, you know? You, you sound terrible, my guy. <laughs> you sound absolutely <laughs> horrible. Um, okay, so... You see, you see, nevertheless, I'm calling in. Yes, th that's dedication. So, Peter... <laughs> Nothing is holding me back. Peter, so talk to me. So you've got a European uh, angle on this. Talk to me about discussions yeah, in your well, family about the EU. What's going on? Well, the thing is, <clears throat> there is there is this, this nationalist tendency all over Europe now. It's the same thing in the U.S., I guess. It's you could you could make a point and compare those two things. So the tendency is to close all the borders and, and focus on your own government. And there's a lot of uh, angst going around. And there is this uh, campaign against the EU 
mainly focusing on the argument that an EU government is interfering with your own um, national government, which shouldn't be. And there is also a lack of education what the EU is really about, the spirit of it, uh, what it has done, and a lot about that is going back to what the media does. So the media focuses on the more questionable laws of the EU. Uh, I'll give you a quick example. The, the EU um, brought up some laws that, for example, doesn't allow the distribution of certain light bulbs. Sounds funny, but that's the thing. What's the what's the thought behind that? Uh, behind it is, of course, to save energy, and the um, the, the common light bulb is, is not very energy efficient, as we all know, because it's generating more heat than light. And LEDs are a lot better, but. <clears throat> Since that isn't working fast enough, the EU decided to uh, forbid the old light bulbs step by step. Um, and what people recognize is, um, well, fuck, All right, I have this chandelier in my apartment and uh, all out of a sudden I can buy the light bulbs I bought the last 20 years. And fuck that. And, and why is that? And all this childish thoughts about it and they're focusing on the on these mm. tiny little interferences and completely oversee the overall good the EU does because if you educate yourself a little bit the EU mainly is a peace project that's that's what it really is because uh, especially in Europe you have such a high density of different cultures really fr from where I live I'll, I'll, I'll get in my car and drive like 500 uh, miles in any direction or even 300 and it's a different language, a different culture in any direction I, I'll, I'll go. So <clears throat> there is not so much common ground like uh, in the US where you have the same basic spirit to some degree and, and most important the same language. So it's pretty tough to hold all those um, cultures and mentality together. And that's what the EU is about and people tend to forget that we are living in a period now where we have the, the longest period of time with peace. Every generation before us, they, they, they witnessed horrible wars and they were, how do you call it, drafted in. My grandparents, for example, my, my father grew up in Vienna and Vienna was, uh, don't you, I don't know if you know that, but, but Vienna was split into four parts and divided into four parts that were governed by um, the French, the Americans, the Britons and the Russians. And my parents uh, told me how terrible afraid they were to pass through the Russian area in, in Vienna. And this continued until 1955. Um, and then there was the declaration of independence uh, in, in Austria, big step. So we were occupied about 10 years after the Second World War. So, so, um, you could, yep. so you see a lot of value in the EU. Oh, I do see a lot of value. But you, there, you, it's you, not perfect. It's not flawless. But um, the good things um, absolutely outweigh the, the, the bad things. So okay. it's really a necessary project. I, do, I don't see anything good coming from more nationalism nationalism never did anything good in history for anyone okay so you and but then you have family members who are on the other side of you absolutely okay so then those so those convers i cannot imagine you ever actually raising your voice uh peter because you and i have disagreed stridently on things and you you pretty much kept it the exact same way but so, so then, yeah, but the main, the, the, there's a big difference because you are pretty a rational guy, and as soon as I pitch any argument to you, you will, you will, um, you will first of all listen, think about it, and then respond in, in some rational and smart uh, and calm way. 
But the discussions I have about the youth, they're not rational. They're highly emotional from the other side, mainly. So they're telling me things like, no, they're working on secret, the secret soldier program. They're working on a, a EU military. Secret, secret what programs? That, that will take over and everything else. And, and that's just plain bullshit. And it's hard to talk them down. Well, I, it's... <laughs> It's very, very, very difficult to um, rationalize with conspiracy theorists. And I'm not saying it in the pejorative sense, like to say that they're like irrational as an insult. I'm saying in the sense of it's kind of impossible to disprove it. Because if you bring up evidence that clearly disproves it, they go, see, that's that's what they want you to think. You know what I mean? So Absolutely. So, so it's... it's and, it's, and it's not based on fact. So they can't prove it in the first place so how am i how could i be able to disprove it okay so how do you so these these folks are folks that you would say they're nationalists they're like we need to keep our um country identity look at the united states that's why i'm assuming they're saying that's why they're so powerful and blah 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 because they got one language they got one culture and, and if you come to the u.s you have to assimilate but with us you have the European Union, which is trying to do all this conspiracy stuff. We need to make sure that our country is is has a specific identity. I'm assuming that's how the argument goes. Yeah, which is just plainly stupid because Austria and 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 many countries in, in Europe are melting pots, pots, cultural melting pots. They they evolved from from so many different cultures. I mean, even in, in Austria, the, you have the, the Czech influences. Hungarian influences, the German ones, it's so many different ones, and people tend to forget it. It's, it's even in our names. If you if you look if you open if you open up a telephone book and, and go through the names, the most common ones in Austria, you will end up with all different kind of names right through the, the Balkan states and, and and all that. And still, people come up with these terms like a true Austrian. You know, you know like like. Like the ones in the U.S., what's a true American? Please describe it to me. You know, right? Well, I I, I actually have I actually have M. Death fan. Are you in the house yet? Where is M. Death fan? M. Death fan is my far right uh, buddy in the in the village, so he's going to be able to to come up and define what a true American is. But so so you. And I'm sure there's a lot of folks that think like you. When you hear anything that's sort of nationalistic at all, you you get nervous. You don't believe that nationalism has any sort of um, and, and deaf fan call in. You don't believe that nationalism is is any can be any force for good in the world. No, not not by far shot. Because if you listen to me, I I witnessed firsthand in my family what nationalism brought us. We as a whole country. So right. it's, it's and, and kind of a paradox. It's paradoxical for me as an Austrian to say, yeah, yeah, more nationalism would be pretty good. <laughs> really? Like 80 years ago? We, we, haven't, haven't we learned anything? There are, there are all in the media now. Um, if, you, if, you, if you have a look at the, at the media, the real media, the good media, where real journalists are doing pretty decent work still, which is uh, kind of, of getting rare, but still they're, they're printing some pretty clever articles about um, how similar um, the political um, situation is right now compared to the 1930s. We're, we're, and when you, say, when you say 80 years ago, we're talking about Nazi Germany, right? And Nazi, that stuff. Yeah, right before, right before. Yeah. Because it's amazing. Uh, I read some articles and there were still things I didn't know uh, when uh, Hitler gained influences and he was uh, elected. Everybody was sure, it was all over the media back then, that um, him getting a chancellor would calm him down, would, would um, put some reason into him, the responsibility and... and being in the parliament would would somehow um, make him reasonable. Okay. And, yeah. So Peter, we can, all know how, how that turned out. So Peter, can you stay on the line? I've got M. Death fan, who is an American right wing nationalist, um, that would love to talk to us about the virtues of nationalism. Maybe you guys can have a conversation.
Sure. Okay, stay on the line. So Peter, my leftist European buddy, is going to have a conversation with uh, M. Death fan, my right-wing nationalist American buddy. This is going to be very interesting. Give me one second. <laughs> All right, where do you go? Here we are. I'm calling you up right now, Mr. M. Death fan. Add. There he is. The phone call is coming. <clears throat> Peter, can you still hear me? Yes. Uh, M. Death fan, are you on the line? I'm here. Okay. Um, did you hear what Peter said about nationalism? I just got in here. I was listening a little bit. I think he just has a negative outlook on it. I think it's just a matter of defining what we think the definition of the word means. Okay. Peter, do me a favor and define for our friend M. Death fan what uh, nationalism is. Well, that's, that's a pretty hard task for me to do. Wow. Um... Would you mind passing passing that task along and, and, and do uh, uh, MDEF the favor? And I'm I'm pitching in with some corrections if I if I don't sure. agree. Yeah, it's fine. I think this word is something that's been, and this is why I'm gonna. Uh, yeah, okay. You got it's been it's funny because you always say that I'm a right wing uh, nationalist. And that's fine. You know what? I'll gladly uh, identify as a, a proud Western chauvinist. And a right-wing nationalist, if that's what that if that's what you think. But I want to describe what that means. So nationalism is simply pride in one's country. That's it. Okay. What's the um, difference to patriotism then? I really wouldn't say there's much of a difference. I think that what I see is that, and this is what I noticed the left does a lot, at your left or whatever, but I noticed that they try to redefine words. So they'll take a word that's been around for a long time and all of a sudden they try to demonize it by trying to, you know, 90% of the media in this country it does lean left. And this is interesting, Vin, because I wanted to talk to you about this because back to that original conversation we had about the Proud Boys with what BuzzFeed was doing. Because BuzzFeed is, I'm sorry, I think it's kind of a joke. It's kind of like Vice News, uh, which is just the same. And you know what's funny? Because you know who started Vice Media? Gavin McGinnis. Oh. He's one of the founders, and he's actually a Canadian. But anyway, I've done a lot of research, and we can have a conversation about that maybe some other time, Vin, like a 2.0 of that other video we did. But... um. Yeah, it's kind of like a way they, they just got the right wing nationalist group and they start saying white nationalists, you know, or they try to put the words together and they're trying to create and demonize these people. And that being a nationalist is just someone that believes in the country. You know what I mean? Like I want to see the country do well, you know, America first kind of thing like Trump says all the time. And, you know, but, uh, but, 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 but sorry, I'm not saying isn't isn't a part of demonizing things a, a, a main tool of what Trump does. Like demonizing migrants and and, and demonizing uh, what was it called the caravan and all this. The caravan. You know, I, I like that you said the word migrants because I even yeah. that's a funny. It's a funny, funny word to see how that word. The word. Oh, hold, on, hold, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Stop, stop. Okay, stop, stop. Sorry. Okay, no, we're going to have this conversation for sure. I just want to make sure okay. that we have it in an orderly fashion because you guys are hitting on, and I'm sure you guys are on opposite sides of this, which is great, which is the intention of the channel. But I, I just want to make sure, first of all, I want to define what nationalism and patriotism is, if there's any distinction. Okay. And then I want Peter and M. Death Fan to come up with definitions that you both can agree on and then after that we can talk about the virtues of it and then we can go into trump and all the other stuff okay so thank god you're here because what would we do without vin we'd just be all over the place we're, we're <laughs> so and to be fair and m death man i know that you weren't impugning peter here but peter handed off the definition to to you so you're not saying that peter is trying to demonize or redefine anything because he's handing the definition off to you right Oh, no, not at all. Okay, no. okay, okay. All right, so go ahead, start. Try to give us a... I'm posting in the chat what Britannica says. Let me just read what Britannica says about patriotism, and then you can talk about nationalism, and then we'll agree or not, and then tweak it, and then go for it. Okay, so here's what Britannica says about patriotism. Feeling, feeling of attachment and commitment to a country, nation, or political community. 
patriotism, love of country, and nationalism, loyalty to one's nation are often taken to be synonymous, yet patriot patriotism has its origin some 2,000 years prior to the rise of nationalism in the 19th century. Um, and then they've Britannica is defining nationalism as a sense of national consciousness exalting one nation above all others and placing primary emphasis on promotion of its culture and interests as opposed to those of other nations or supranational groups. Okay, so what I'm getting here is that according to Encyclopedia Britannica, patriotism is just a feeling in your heart when that all of, that I feel when the uh, Star Spangled Banner is played at a football game or a baseball game, and I think about all my friends and and whatever, and, and my brother, and you know whatever, right? That's just the feeling you get in your heart, and you get a little tear in your eye. Nationalism is America's first, America's superior to other nations. We have to worry about America at the expense of other nations. Does everybody agree with that definition, yeah. Peter and and Death? Hmm. Um. The patriotism one, I do. The nationalism, because I mean, I'm looking at the right here. It says patriotic feeling principles are F. So it's using the word patriotism or patriotic to define nationalism, which is interesting. But I mean, I can okay, see what, what you're saying or if you're trying to define that. Or, what's your source? What, what was your source there? Uh, this is just through Google Dictionary, like the first thing that comes up for patriot meaning. Okay, I'm on Britannica. Yeah, nationalism meaning. I'm on Britannica.com. I'll put that link in the uh, in the chat. There it is, right there. Patriotism and nationalism. Um, what was what was your um, what was your perspective on um, the difference between patriotism and nationalism? I never really thought of them as different things. You know, I guess in, in my in my life, you know. Um, Okay. I'm not, when I say nationalism, I don't look at it as a negative. I'm sure it could be taken that way. I mean, you look at the what does Nazi stand for? I mean, it's the National Socialist uh, whatever party. But I'm not taking it to that extreme. I'm just looking for more of uh, you know pride in one's country. Um, you know, I believe the West is the best overall. But I'm not going to let you know. I'm not going to not talk to other nations or want to try to be friends with them or try to you know bring them to the table and to, so does that make any sense? I don't really think there's much of a difference personally. Well, uh, again, the patriotism seems to be the emotional attachment, but nationalism is the ideology based on the premise that the individual's loyalty and devotion to the nation state surpasses other individual groups or interests. Well, what I think here is you can't have nationalism without patriotism. The one goes into the, into the other. It's the more extreme version of it. Yes, but you can be, an, according to these definitions, you can be a patriot without being a nationalist. Yes, but not the other way around. That's what I, I, I agree with that based on these definitions. What I want to know is, are we good with these definitions of patriotism and nationalism? Yes, I am. I, I would be totally. Uh, sure, I sure take nationalism to an extreme like you like you saw it happen in Europe, which I can understand what the caller is, is referencing. But uh, I look at it with a foot into the uh, where constitutional public maybe using that as our guidelines to not be able to fall without the, the law of the land. So okay, and don't don't you believe in America first? And I mean, well, the, don't our politicians? I would I would hope that they think that. Don't, yeah, so you believe in, in America at the, you know, should be preeminent, even if it, you know, at, at the cost of other nations. Because you're an American. Well, what do we mean the cost? Well, yeah, I mean, at the cost of other nations, I guess we have to define that. But, I mean, I mean, I would hope the people that are leaders of our country and, uh, on a federal level would, would think that way. That that's the purpose of the social contract that is the government, that we protect our citizens. So, you know, um, first and foremost, otherwise we'll, we will simply um, disavow this social contract and we'll form a new government that takes care of their citizens. That's the whole purpose, I think, of okay. the, uh, the, the founders intended. Yep. Okay. So, so I think we agree on nationalism because I, I think that that definition in Britannica is not extreme. It can be taken to the extreme as in my country above every other country, 
But I am hearing you say that America above everybody else. Right? Yeah, but if, if you're a melting pot, I mean, I would argue that we're the biggest melting pot, even more than any other European nation. I mean, we are, we have everybody here. And I think that, you know how people always say diversity is our strength? I think that's bullshit. It's just a feature. You know, I think, I, I think, I think that it's what, what makes us, what, what brings us together, should bring us together is assimilation. And what I mean that is that we, we can be different people, but we have our foot grounded into what the Bill of Rights and Constitution stand for. And, and, and we have, we, we share that common idea. Other than that, you know, everything else and culture differences and all of that, that's, you know, it's a, again, it's, it's a feature, you know, no one has a choice into what they're born into, but, um, that's what I think. Okay. Okay. So, uh, Peter, what do you think of that? Well, uh, I think you should not underestimate the, the power of uh, the power of uh, diversity, and, and and also a very very interesting thing is that from a European perspective, uh, um, what most people would define as totally normal standard patriotism in America would be already uh, perceived as some kind of nationalism uh, in in some European countries. And what I mean by that is um, I think you have the Pledge of Allegiance in school and some things like that. Yeah. If I'm not wrong. Yeah. Yes. It's not ev- it's not everywhere the same. I, I I heard it's it's more more practices in in in, in some countries than in others. Am I right? Uh, the southern states in a, the southern region of America, I think that that's pretty. Alec, uh, help us out here because you're in the south. Um, but even I'm up in Maine and the kids still do it, which is northeast. They still do it. Yeah, I did it when I was a kid. But I mean, I told yeah. you that I'm more of a social. I'm, a, I'm more of a cl- classical liberal in, in that sense. Where I, I'm not even sure that I like the pl- Pledge of Allegiance. So, so this is un- this is unthinkable in Germany and Austria. Why? Because it's it's so close to what uh, Hitler youth used to do to um, swear on on all the national values and and you name it, and that would be way too close to what happened back there. So we kind of separate everything that. Could even rem- remotely reminds of that. So we have a total different approach to patriotism. Um, and I, 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 re- I really give it a thought. If you, if you are um, deeply uh, embedded and being even the cause for two world wars, you gotta stop. You gotta start thinking, or you are just vanish from from the face of, of any world map. Which, by the way, Austria almost did because we we're a tiny country now, with eight million people, and we used to be um, much much bigger in, in, in the past. So <clears throat> the thing is, what do you do after that? You fucked up, kind of, yeah. And I know that the situation in the U.S. is completely different because you never had any war on 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 your own soil, so that's a big difference. Well, we had the Civil War. Uh, yeah, the Civil you know, War, but that's that's not the same. And and we had to weird. rebuild the, the, the home the, the damn country twice. So you no, know, I get what you're saying. I actually have a question for you on that because I mean, from American perspective, I I see what's go going on in Europe, and you know, I'm I am German, I am Irish, I am. A couple of things, uh, British, yeah. but I've seen what's happened in in, in Europe, and, and lovely Angela Merkel and what her policies have done to change the dynamics of that con- of the different country. And I was curious to wonder uh, what your thoughts were on like what's going on in, in Germany and France, where where um, yes, I believe that the German people have because of what's happened, it's completely capitulated to the outside influence of these unelected bureaucrats in the EU. But uh, what do you think about all of these migrants that are getting flooded into the country? What do you think that's going to do in the next generation or two, where these people literally have a foot in their still in their home country and they're not willing to 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 assimilate well, well, into the culture? It's not flooding anymore. That's the first um, this big thing there. It was unregulated, and it was a, a huge mistake uh, seeing it afterwards. Um, and that was, when was it? 2015, I guess it was. 
that's when uh, uh, when they opened the border there were like um they, they were coming by the hundreds of thousands and there were like the numbers were 50,000 uh, breaching the borders per day which is kind of insane um I'm actually surprised uh, to hear you say that Peter yeah but but it's but it's pretty you have to you have to see it in context you had the the, the Syria a war going on and all politicians all over Europe were afraid to make any comments when um, when this 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 movement started so there was nothing going on no reaction no politician uh, wanted to be the first to say okay we're gonna stop that or or even they're welcome or something there was nothing there were Basically, what, what they did, they were waiting. So what happened in the, the citizens start to form this uh, movement of, um, how do you call it, solidarity? So they were the first who, who welcomed people at the, um, at the train stations and, and wherever they, they, they arrived and started to help them so you could you could argue, you could argue that that we were kind of naive but that was that was the first the first movement so peter can i can i play that, devil's that, that advocate for peter can i play devil's advocate yeah. for a second sure you, you can go ahead isn't that misstep or mistake a consequence of the fact that there was no patriotism or that patriotism, no, let, let because you couldn't. Point, and I think I think it's clear then. Yeah, Euro could easily handle handle all those migrants easily. But what happened is uh, Austria and Germany, especially those two, ended up with with hundreds of thousands of the people because we were the uh, like the the, the cherry top nations. Every one of, the, of those refugees wanted to come to, to Austria, Germany, and Norway. Uh, nobody wants to go to, I don't know, uh, Romania or, or the other countries. Okay. So it was cherry picking. Okay. So that, that was a situation. And what happened from there is the Germans, the Austrians, and maybe even France, and some of the others asked in, within the EU, uh, my, my fellow countries, how about a little shifting, how about a little help? And suddenly we, we realized we, we are not all, we are not, um, on the same page. So what happened is we, we kind of stuck with all those people and all the other countries said, yeah, that's, that's, that's your problem. We, we don't want any of this, any, and that was completely no, new and unforeseeable. So it was a, a big surprise and a huge shock and everything from there um, that's what everything gets back to all the problems are rooted still by the way uh, in that the countries couldn't agree on an equal share of the load of refugees because if they would have uh, it would be pretty easy because it would be like 10 or 20,000 uh, refugees for every country. And that's, that's nothing. It's so easily doable. Okay. So you're, you're not saying that you're saying, yes, it was a mistake for Austria and Germany to take in so many, but national lack of yeah, patriotism. Because they were naive enough to believe that the other countries would do the same, which they didn't. Right. You you know, the funny part is, is, that, is that the people didn't even get a choice. You had unelected bureaucrats in the EU allowing this to happen without even without even asking the people of these independent countries if that if they wanted this to happen. France will never be the same again. Germany will never be the same again. There are no go zones in Britain. You can't go there. Sharia law is incompatible with Western culture. I mean, I've True. lived among these people. I've, I True. I know how these people are, and you just can't. It's just completely different. Cultures now. That the nice thing about America, the, uh, uh, the idea. Let's, let me talk about America here for a second, because this is how we're different. The cultures are different, and this is why you're seeing a rise of nationalism in Europe, because there are people who are going. Because like, look, look, there's there's things that happen like rapes all the time. Have you seen these migrant rapes? Where they, they just literally they try to censor that from the people. 
and the people are getting pissed off that this is happening or like their people their, their kids are getting killed or whatever's happening rising up and i would too you know if you yeah, gonna censor it from the people that this is even occurring because they don't want bad optics of it but again the american side of it is a little bit different the idea is supposed to be if you come here you assimilate into the culture meaning you learn the language you learn the history you learn why this is the best of the worst ideas we've had and we are yes. diverse but yes we are also linked in that we both believe in a constitutional republic uh that that this is our rights that you know that you know our, our rights are from from our creator and life liberty and the pursuit of happiness and then the rest of the constitution so that's what was supposed to bring us together but now we america's affected with you know why i infected with this idea of socialism and wanting to go away and progress so far out away from it that we're going to totally shun what made us great in the beginning i'm um and i think that's where the okay so you, know, you see all these so people Peter, do you agree with the statement that France will never be the same again, or that, or that? Do you agree with the idea that the French have lost their culture? No, that's far too radical. But first of all, the media is blowing this, this, this rape statistics and everything way out of proportion. Way, because if you if you are serious about it, then look up the stats that the rape numbers aren't going up. But the ratio, how much uh, refugees or uh, migrants what, are in... What about the stabbings in Britain? I mean, do you think that's just... Do you, I mean, how do you explain that? Well, I don't have, a, uh, I don't have any answer for that because I'm, I'm not familiar with the stabbing. I mean, I've seen some, I, mean I, I understand these are huge countries and there's probably a lot of portions of the country that are untouched. But then when you see, like, there's been countless videos of just mobs of people running through streets uh, uh, in these different countries and just looting and rioting and all this stuff. It's crazy. But it's not like that all the time. So M. Death Man. Hear me out. There's two different things about people coming in, the, in your country. The first, the first group is... Uh, People who want to uh, apply for a green card, let's say in the U.S., who are willing to adapt uh, any culture, um, and it's the same in Europe. And we need that, by the way, because uh, especially in, in Western Europe, um, people are not having enough children. So the demographic problem is huge. Our pension system is nearly collapsing. The, the, the statistics and the foresight is horrible so we need migration that's that's the first fact even even if the media and the people are trying to a uh, hard trying hard to to neglect that but it's of course all bad. and the second group are refugees and that's where things are getting difficult because first of all they are not coming by free will it's it's just they have no other choice mostly no, this is, this is, I agree with you there. This is um, we kind of talked about a little bit before, Vin, about the war in Syria. We have a lot to do with what has occurred there. Yeah, but why the a lot point of the, getting, the, the point I'm trying to get to, to get is is how we handle them when they arrive is the biggest influence on what will happen with them in the next ten to twenty years in the country. And if and if you treat them like scum from I don't know shithole countries and and what you have, you know, what do you expect to happen? The, the, the first thing that happens is they get around and they start forming like ghettos, which will become those uh, no-go zones you referred to. That's all connected because if you gave serious chance and if you say, okay, uh, um, I get where you're coming from. How about uh, some language lessons for free? How about this and that? And, and you actually do something for integration um you will you will see completely different behavior and results and there are started and case studies and, and lots of examples in my own country because we have some small villages who um voluntarily apl uh, applied to have like 100 refugees and it's it's working like a charm i tell you really if you if okay. you if you take Think, hold on peter to hold this on level, it's perfect but in the big cities big cities where you have um, whole areas where you find nothing but refugees. Of course, the the, the conditions start to spiral out in in, so in Peter, a downward spiral. So, Peter, are are you saying this is just a yes or no question? Do you agree that there are no yes. go zones in France and other place, other countries in Europe? Yeah, there are. Okay, 
and kind of you've got to be careful with, with that term but yes okay oh yeah okay and 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 Def fan did you understand his solution to that problem no, I do. I've actually heard this before, and I think it's an interesting one where you're like, yes, you treat them nicely, then maybe like their kids are the ones that uh, emulate better into culture because they've grown up there, they're friends with the, with the people. Um, I've heard of that, and I, I mean, I can understand that piece. Um, so. not, not even a second generation, it, it, it also affects the first generation. The, the first contact defines um, how you are mentally... Um, how, how you open up, how open-minded you are to everything new. If I feel welcomed... I agree with you, country. man, but we're rational people, and some of these people bringing in there are not rational people. They're not They're not coming in from, like, you're, we're, you're a, you're, I could say this would be argued, this is, you're a Western culture, right? I mean, you're coming from a Western culture, so you kind of think this way, but, you know, I've lived among, among people from these countries, and it's a lot different. They think of things a lot differently. Now, maybe, maybe you're right, maybe you could do it, but, I mean... Man, there's uh, a lot of people live in. So, so oh, earlier, one second, I gotta step. Uh, Peter, earlier you said that um, that America is more homogenous because we have the same culture generally and and the same language. Whereas, if you drive a couple hundred miles anywhere, you're in a completely different world. Um, so, when you yeah. hear Trump supporters talk about. Um, Mexicans, other immigrants, they need to learn English to be part of this country. They need to assimilate um, that we cannot have multiculturalism in the sense of we're going to have five different languages in America, that English has to be the sole language, that type of thing. Do you do you see the validity of that type of argument? Yes, because it's the same here in, in, in Austria and Germany. It's mandatory now to learn German. To, to get the citizenship, it's mandatory. It's not an option anymore. Okay, so you don't believe that 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 exalting a particular language is a form of nationalism? No. Okay, because you, we we have to have. I, I think it's the, it's the, uh, the, the the least common denominator is, is that what it's called? It's it's absolutely necessary. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so so then uh, you, you can still celebrate your own culture and where you come from, but still learn and accept the culture and the language of, of the the country you're now living in, which is I think which is a common practice in in the U.S. Well, uh, if, if, well, if you look at some if some names of I, I think there are five different Vienna's in, in in the U.S. alone, so that says it all, and. I looked up a statistic uh, in, in how many regions in America are still um, speaking German or learning German, even if it's uh, the fourth or fifth generation. But it's it's kind of, it's part of their culture and tradition, so it, it, it is still a, a melting pot, and they're still embracing it. But without without this foolish sense of honor and proudness and putting their roots above. Um, the culture they are now uh, embedded in. Okay, but so, you do realize that in America there are leftist forces that would call you racist or or ethnocentric for saying that English needs to be the dominant language in America. Oh yeah. yeah okay, so you're you're, you're saying that that's that, how left I am. <laughs> okay, so so you and M. Def fan, M. Def fan had to go take care of his kids. But you and M. Def fan okay. have common ground. You believe in assimilation, that if you're going to migrate to a given country, that you need to assimilate to the uh, standard of that country. Yeah, you're yes. a guest. You're yes. a guest in someone else's home. You know what I mean? You yeah. play by their rules. That's, what I, that's how not, I was. Not even guess. How, how is it possible that you that you embrace a new culture by not doing so? Uh, I think if you don't do so, you're not accepting that this is your, your new home, you know? Okay. You're, still, you're staying behind in your past, which leaves you open to maybe I will go back sometime. Okay, well, oh. But you're, not, you're not really arriving in, in your new uh, culture. So it's, it's clear to me, 
you're serious about it, you embrace the new culture, absolutely. Okay. That's, that's, a, that's a good point, right? You know, this is the biggest thing about it. If you are coming here and you want to be here and you're willing to do this and you're willing to do what it takes to become a citizen, that's great. But if you're kind of come over here and start demanding things and yelling at our government that we're not, def- you know, they're not even happy to be there in some of these cases, you know, and I've seen that the case with some of the people that Absolutely. are in migrants in, in Europe too, where they're just like flooding the streets and flooding the highways and throwing stuff at the trucks and getting in the way. Like, that's crazy to me. I, I don't think that should be allowed. Absolutely. I, I hate those those cupids. So I've seen them. It's hard to, to remain calm, but seeing that, yeah. Well, you you don't you don't hate them. You hate what they're doing. Yeah. You don't hate them. Peter doesn't hate anyone. Um, yeah. No, 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 no. Don't get me wrong. What I hate is is if you blow things out of proportion. Of course, there may be one to five percent of the of the refugees. There are absolutely human scum for whatever reasons. Maybe because they're traumatized and, and never had a childhood and never had uh, decent parents, or maybe as, I don't know, as deviant as, as the other 1% in, in, in every culture. Uh, <clears throat> it goes the, to the same what, here, though. It's the same thing here with the people coming up in the caravan, because you know some of these people may be fine. Maybe they want to seek asylum, and that's fine. They can do so legally, right? Um, but yeah, then but you're going to have you're going to have people coming in and getting into that. They're going to see this is coming through. They're going to join the party. There's going to be a five or so percent, or whatever the percentage of be, uh, is, of be, really bad dudes that are going to come in here. Now, if they come in here and kill someone that you love, right? And like, yeah, like that's the breakdown of the government, the social contract that is to protect their citizens, especially when it hits your family. Now, this is the thing that pissed me off. What the media did when when Trump brought all those uh, families together in front of the cameras. Remember that when he first became president, he said he was going to have a press conference, and all the media outlets uh, showed up, and it was about illegal immigration, and it was about the families that have had people that have gotten killed by illegal immigrants. And there's like it's a staggering number, staggering number, and. That's the kind of thing that, and then you started to see the media start immediately but, but, going into uh, not would, reporting would on you it. Agree, would you agree that there are two standards now? Because I'll give you an example. There was some years ago uh, a big controversy about this fucked up human being. He, he was called uh, uh, Fritzl, and he locked up his own family and his own daughters and them in, in the cellar. And um, they realized that way, about two decades later and it was a big scandal and some French journalists about Austria that this goes back to uh, the Nazi time and that's what happens in Austria if you leave them alone and whatsoever. It was a pretty disgusting thing. N- nothing to be proud of. So <clears throat> what I didn't read after that is that, I don't know, the, the all the people um, around where it happened should be deported or or treated differently whatsoever. So you get my point. As soon as you read about a rape case with with any refugee involved, it's 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 completely it blown out out of any proportions. You have to close the borders, the the airports. There there has to be done something it's, it's it sparks this outrage well here, here's the thing but here, no, we're, we're, we're in agreement but the thing is it's like legal immigration's okay that's what this country is all about that's what we're talking about here at least here in the u.s come and come in legally get vetted we can find out who you are we don't have to just get to mass let all these people okay. in and without okay, figuring out who they are and if they're actually part of that from honduras or not or do they just jump in the line because you know as they were walking by they're like let's let's okay. get in on this well so, ho- hold on for a second hold on let me ask a question please win because it's so important to go, me go ahead go ahead go ahead how i see it all what is happening right now with the refugees and and let's not forget it's a human right to seek a refugee by the way yeah all that is happening right now is for me a test run a very important test run what what will be happening in the future and why because if global warming is real and by the way i think it is you will have in the next 50 years um uh, you will have the the ocean rising and what what will be happening is that uh, the land mass is shrinking so you will have the first um uh climate refugees but th- th- just give, give me a second. I'm Death Man. I have two questions for you. One, and, and I'm not challenging you. I just, I just want to know: Do you have any statistics, whether in Europe or in America, of 
migrant violent crimes in the sense of they're committing them at this crazy disproportionate rate? I'd have to go pull it up, but I've, I mean, over the years, I've just read a lot about what's going on in Britain, and I've seen what's happened in France, but uh, I don't have statistics right at this moment, but I'm sure I could at least look for them. I know that stabbings are up in Britain. Well, yeah, yeah, I know stabbings uh, are up in Britain. I mean, I, I know that. What I'm never, saying... That never was a thing before. What I'm saying is, if you've got... But aren't they, aren't they they're mostly stabbing themselves amongst each other? Refugees stabbing refugees. Oh, 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 what's Finn's second question? I don't know. No, no, we have to find out. But, but let's. I'll, I'll look into it. But what's your second question? Okay, so so we don't have the data. So because because what I'm hearing it, you you say is man these these migrants are doing all these these violent rapes and murders, and then I hear um, Peter saying yeah it's being blown out of proportion, and the only way we'd be able to measure that is if we had some data, right? Because if it's like 0.5% of the migrants are doing this, then I'd say, okay, I'm death fan. You're taking this out of proportion. But if it's 3.5, then Peter, that's a different discussion, right? Yeah, absolutely. So, so you know, the next time we have this talk, I want to have this data. The second question that I had is I agree with Peter on this, and I, I don't even know if there's any disagreement to be had. Isn't um, asylum, I'm death fan, um, a, isn't it a, a UN um, human right? And B, isn't it the, I mean, isn't that a policy in America that if, if a person comes to seek asylum, that they, they're handled differently than uh, an immigrant? Yeah, through a port of entry. I saw the video you posted of my man, Judge Napolitano, and I love that dude. He's a very smart guy. Um, yes, they should be able to go through a port of entry to claim asylum. But the issue is... Um, <laughs> Technically, if you're claiming asylum, you would do it in the next neighboring country. You know, there's lots of different. They're going through a bunch of countries to get up here. If they're trying to get out, in Mexico, we even offered that. They don't want to do this. I don't think this caravan. I think a lot of this is politically motivated. Um, be honest with you, it's it's got a lot of the signs of it. When you're seeing, you know, people getting bussed up. Uh, they're not doing it now, but they were literally driving them up in trucks and like, where's who's paying? That's for this. I mean, this seems very strange. And all the lawyers going down the border telling them what to say. But look, if people need help, they can come to a port of entry and they can they can claim asylum and they'll and they're then they will be vetted and that's the way to do it. You know, they're gonna go through and they'll vet out the the people that don't belong with them, I'm sure, right away. Okay, um, so then this, just walk into the this whole characterization no. then of the caravan, quote unquote, as an invasion force is just propaganda then. That's that's a question in death fan. Oh, I'm sorry, I was on mute. Oops. Um, whether it's politically, well, do you think this is an invasion or should it be called an invasion? Well, what I'm saying is the the characterization on the right that this is an invasion of our country is just propaganda. I don't. I, I, it's I mean, strange. It's strange. I don't know. I mean, it's if just, we you know, agree, the whole thing, the timing is weird. Well, well weird. look, I, I think I think that these people are being used as propaganda pieces on both sides. Sure. My, my concern, yeah. though, is yeah. when I hear that we're deploying military there and when our president says if they throw rocks, we're going to shoot them. And then when I hear of these militia groups locking and loading and going down to the border, I don't know how true that is. Did but you see the video of why, why the Trump why Trump said that, though? Did you see that helicopter coming in? They're throwing rocks at the helicopter. These people are not... Has a helicopter ever stuff. been downed by a rock? <laughs> These people are trying to help them. They're not... I mean, why would you be throwing rocks at a helicopter? Well, They're not uh, trying to do anything but help these people. Well, hold on. What I'm saying is when you characterize these people as an invasion force... Because I believe that both the, the, that the left wing and the right wing are both using these folks as propaganda pieces before the midterms. That's obvious. Mm -hmm. And if you're a leftist mm -hmm. and you don't see that, then you're blind. Welcome to the show. But my concern is the ramifications of each side's um, uh, propaganda. And so when I hear these people being characterized as an invasion force... And then I see our president saying he's going to open fire on them. And then I see, because you're a military guy, you know that if you open fire on these people, you're going to hit collateral damage, right? Yeah, I, I heard him say that. I've also heard him say other comments since then, too, about clarifying. But uh, Yeah, you know, but, but, but MDEF fan now... Troops, I mean, you're throwing rocks at your head. 
I'm sorry. I mean, some of these, these guys put rubber bullets in and shoot him with rubber bullets. Then. I don't care. But, but MDef uh, fan, yeah. hold on for a second. Now we have militia groups locking and loading and going over to the border. So the discipline. The border, the next I mean, yeah, oh, I can't speak right. for those people. We, neither can you. You can't control people. They're going to do what they want to do. But I, I don't think that's a good idea. No. Well, if, you're but you're but a the, discipline. The thing is if, you, if, if you say you, you you have to see in context and globally, I mean, it's a, it's a complete joke to me. Have you read the numbers? Do you know how much refugees are in Turkey and Lebanon? It's all million in camps there. Yeah, this is a completely ice. This is a completely separate issue because this is like something that's happened many times before here. Uh, these caravans coming up and, and and they just start coming in and they just want to come through the border. Look, they can hit the port of entry. They can claim asylum if they get vetted. That's Look, fine. Please but, see see it see it in proportion. So there are countries who are willingly taking a million refugees in, and you read nothing about them complaining and about uh, being about any tendencies well, going. Uh, with his nationalism on the rise, well, and there are like seven people coming to the border in the U.S., and and, and every and everybody freaks out. Well, keep yeah, in mind, mean, Peter, hold on. 22 hold. million estimated. Okay, go ahead. Sorry. Well, well I, I think you're going where I'm going. Peter, to be fair, especially in the community I live in, about around 9-11, around 2001, my community in Maine took in a massive influx of African refugees. So... And this, this is during the Bush administration, okay, which was a right-wing administration. We took in a ton of refugees. America has has welcomed literally millions of refugees um, into our country. Um, my specific concern right now, I'm deaf fan, and 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 I I I, I want to kind of push you a little bit and hold you to the flames a little bit. You have a president. And a right-wing media arm who is characterizing these people who you just said they have the right to seek asylum. We have the right to vet them, I agree, but they have, they're they asylum seekers. You characterize them in this current political climate as an invasion force. You then say that you're going to authorize, you, you yes. send your troops to the border, you authorize them, you, you drop hints that you're willing to open fire, and now you have militia groups who to your point may not be the most rational people who are now loading up and going and then the guy who shot up that synagogue basically alluded to the fact that, the, that this was an invasion force and because this particular synagogue was uh, supporting these invaders he was going to go and kill people like do you see that as as a recipe for disaster at all and does Trump need to um be more careful about the rhetoric and the right wing do they need to be more careful about the rhetoric that we're using about these people i think well i, I think in this is particular issue i think the reason that the optics of it i think trump's just projecting strength he doesn't want this to become a reoccurring issue every month we deal with this kind of thing the next caravan of people coming up here we go again now as far as an invasion, look, um, we don't know. We don't know who's mixed in with these people. We don't even know. So we don't know who's mixed in with them. We know a lot of people bad exist down there and do a lot of bad things that we wouldn't want them up here. Like, for instance, they were saying uh, the Department of Homeland Security was saying people that they have released and deported back down to Mexico or south of Mexico were verifiably going back into these, uh, working their way into the into this caravan. So I mean. If, these people need to be vetted one by one. That's not my question. Like intensity down there. That's not my question. Here's my question. <laughs> Do you see danger in using rhetoric yeah. like invasion you, force? You, know, you let the military handle it. They'll be just fine. The military will take care of those militia people. Those yeah, people aren't yeah. going to do shit. Yeah, but that right wh now. what do you mean the militia? The mil How do you know the militia is not going to do anything? Because the military will go down there and they'll secure that area. The militia ain't gonna, it's some little pitiful band of, of people is not going to, it's not, they're going to be dealt with. They'll be dealt with quickly. Are you serious? Well, do you, do you remember what happened with the, uh, with the cow, the farmer guy in Utah? Farmer guy. Oh, when they took over, uh, uh it was, yeah, I think I do remember that. Who, who what? went toe to toe with the federal government and won? Yeah. It was the militia. So your, your trivialization of what damage these militia folks could do at the border is insane to me. It was less than a decade ago, M. Deathman. What are you talking about? 
Well, so you're saying, you're talking about militias showing up with guns and all of that. We'll have to see what, I mean, I don't think they're going to be able to, um, <laughs> you know, just do whatever they want. They're if if five if with, five years ago, and, what do you mean? All these guys are all scoped out. What, I'm death fan. They uh, are scoped out, dude. This is confirmation bias, my brother. We're talking about something that happened in a different state and a different issue. This, I'm not saying. No, I'm, I'm talking about. The down there. There's 8,000 people down there. How many? I'm talking about a mentality, and I'm talking about a president who doesn't seem to understand the moment that we're in. It's the same discussion I had with you about your boy who was posting pictures of a guy about to assassinate someone. Like this is this is what I don't understand about what's happening on the on the right now. The left. Like I said, is absolutely using these people for propaganda, but the the rhetoric that's happening on the right, I don't see any self awareness of the fact that this type of stuff ends up getting people killed. Because we're in a nation of three hundred million people, and we don't need, we only need half of one percent of one percent of us to get activated by this type of rhetoric. I mean, don't you, aren't you concerned about, you You got this kind of lackadaisical kind of, well, yeah, I mean, these militia people, they stood down the FBI a couple of years ago, but that was a different state. Bro, they were coming in all over the country. I know this for a fact because I knew one of them. <laughs> I remember that. The dude went from Maine to Utah. Well, let me ask you something, Vin. Okay, let me ask you something. How would you think that this should be handled? I mean, if you got an idea on how this should be, and we're not speaking to it properly, we're not taking everything into consideration, how should it be handled? Okay, first well, thing. Maybe without uh, instrumentalizing it. How about that? Being the, the voice of reason, a president. Well, let's give me an example. The voice of example. Reason. Show me what you would say. What okay, okay you asked me a question. Let, 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 me, let me lay out the uh, Middle America game plan, okay? And I love this dialogue, guys. First thing. Me too. First thing, I think you, Peter, and I all agree that... Um, if you're going to come to this country, look, I was born in, in Jamaica. I was not born in the United States of America. I was born in Jamaica, but I came to this country. My mother said, look, we're in America now. And she showed me around and she says, this is what Americans do. This is different from Jamaica. And this is what we're going to do now because we're Americans now. Right now. I didn't have to learn another language because Jamaica's primary language is English. I had some Patois, but you know, I got rid of that just naturally over time. I, all of us agree, you come to a country, you got to assimilate, you got to learn the language, right? So that's one of the reasons I know more American history than probably most Americans, because my mom was like, look, if we're going to be in America, you're going to know American history, okay? Okay, so we all agree on that. So in the context of the asylum seekers, that's, that's plank number one. Plank number two, I agree with you, Peter probably does too. We absolutely should vet these individuals, right? That's just practical, right? Um, I, uh, that's, that's practical. Here's the thing, though. Now, when I get to the left, now when I get to the media wing, because right now the left doesn't really have a lot of political power, okay? When I get to the media wing, the leftists are using these people to paint anybody that just said what I just said two seconds ago as a racist, ethnocentric Nazi. And I think that type of rhetoric from the left creates a certain environment where it pushes people to the fringes. What the left needs to do is say, D -d do what Peter did. Peter said, look, this is law. They're asylum seekers. Yep, they need to learn the language. They need to assimilate. And we need to vet them. But they're asylum seekers and leave it at that. What the right needs to do, however, is to realize that when folks on the right get – look, when folks on the left get radicalized, they join Antifa and take over a street and beat people up. I get it. But the fact of the matter is – when the right gets radicalized, people are being killed. This happened last week in our country. When the right gets radicalized, they load up their weapons and go and, and go to Utah and point weapons. I couldn't even believe this. I was like, this is crazy to me. These dudes are pointing weapons at federal agents and they stare, they stare down the federal agents. So when, so when the right wing gets radicalized... When the right wing gets radicalized, you have to realize what type of moment you're in. So I'm not going to – you you as a right wing person and as the president of our country, we cannot use words like invaders and deploying the military to kind of create this environment among a certain group of right wing fringe who believe that they're going to lose their country. Like there's – and Deathman, there are people that literally believe that these people – 
can you take their country from there. them. They're not no, as know, nuanced. I, I, I thank you for the explanation, and I, I think I understand where you're coming from more now. Um, you know, yeah, there, as I told you before, we live in idiocracy. You know, again, we're much more centered than you, us three here speaking with each other. But there are a lot of people that are on the fringe and that aren't that, you know, uh, intelligent. Well, but, yeah, well I, yes. And then, they, hold on. And if they're getting a steady in, diet, I'm sorry. I'm sorry to interrupt you. But if they're getting a steady diet of Fox News and they're getting a steady diet of Invader and steady diet of We Will Shoot Them then those idiots get activated. They can kill people. We've already saw it. That was the guy's motivation in the synagogue. You realize that? Uh, well, that was... I mean, the, you know, you know, like, complaining those two things, but I get what you're saying. Well, no, no, no. You're ha, ha. Saying, you, don't, you, you, don't wanna, you don't want people to kill each other. You, you want to keep the peace. And Death stuff. Fan, he explicitly stated that that was his reason. He's a, this is some crazy idiot. Probably on SSRIs or who knows. We'll see. But... I understand that. I don't. I, look, I don't put a hundred percent. Go. Let me say one thing, and then Peter is up because I'm the moderator. I'm going to back off. And Death Man, I'm not putting a hundred percent of the synagogue shooter on Trump. I'm not. What I'm saying though, no. it, because he was obviously mentally unstable. What I am saying though is that what pushed him over the line was this immigrant thing. He explicitly said it. There's no mystery. And you know how I am. If somebody says something. If Emilian Yulovsky says something about Russia, I'm going to believe him, right? Well, this guy posted why he was going to go in there and kill those Jewish people. And it was directly related to this migrant thing. And it was directly related to this idea that migrants are killing us at a disproportionate level than regular naturalized citizens are. He explicitly said it. And you got to, if you're Trump or if you're a right wing media outlet, you got to take responsibility for that. You see what I'm saying? Okay. Well, or, I can see that. All right, all right. Or, uh, sorry, go ahead, Peter. I'm interrupting here. Go ahead, you're up. So, uh, uh, I'm going to try to make a broader point because I think it's very important to make. Um, because what Trump does is very similar. Um, maybe he's doing it more extremely but it's very similar to what uh, a lot of, of leaders do in in in, in europe now because it's, it, it has become very attractive to to bash on on refugees and see them as the and, and mark them as a major threat so the thing is and uh, my main critic is about politics nowadays that they use the refugees and all the asylum seeking people and make a direct connection which is the oldest trick in the book for me they they make a, a direct connection to everything that's wrong uh in modern society that we have the first generation that won't be as wealthy as uh, the parents and everything connected to that, it, 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 that everything is getting uh, faster and faster, uh, digitalization, globalization, whatsoever, you name it. And they, they connect it with um, the reason for that is immigration. Well, you get very simple, though, no, dude, my, my guy, really quick. It's real simple in America, right? Because if we naturalize, this is, a, this is the argument that we have going on here. If we naturalize these illegal immigrants that are here, which is an estimated 20 to 30, we're not even sure, right? It's going to change the nature of the country because the nature is, the people are going to vote differently. You know what I mean? So the conservative look uh, is that, look, if you come in, you have to want to come in here. You have to want to assimilate into our culture and not just come and get, get, get naturalized and be able to vote. Significantly change this country, you know, like, and so, so progressive that we're going to just abandon the Constitution. We're going to we're going to throw away the Bill of Rights. We're going to become become a socialist country. You know, that doesn't really work out. History doesn't seem to. Well, capitalism is perfect, right? But it's, as I said before, I think it's the best of the worst ideas we've had. It allows us to have a lot of different things, like this discussion that we're having right now. Um, but yeah, that's the, that's the fear I think that you'd see from from the people on the right that um, it's. Because that could significantly change. I mean, they're saying that uh, uh, African Americans and, um, and and Latinos are starting to change in the support. Like, you know, you've, have you heard about Blexit? And there's a lot more conservative leaning, sure. or at least middle of the road leaning uh, people that are not 
white. I hate I hate breaking down pe- colors, man. It's the stupidest thing ever. The color of white that reflects off of your epidermis. Dict- anyway, it's stupid. But that's how it is <laughs> well, in this point, country. It is the changing. Point was, the but point if you was, naturally hmm. 22 million illegal immigrants in this country, what are they going to do? They're going to vote for what? Who gets to give stuff away? You know what I mean? If they're going to they're going to vote they're going to vote left. It's going to change the nature of this country overnight. Whoa, whoa, whoa! So think, you're that's what we see. Wait a second. So M Death fan, you're not worried okay, about. That's your greatest fear. Hold on, hold on, Vin. Hold on, Vin. Or wait, go, Vin. No, Peter. No, go ahead, Peter. It's just my show. What what right do I have to talk? Go ahead, Peter. <laughs> no, the the point that I was trying to make is that the left, the left um, makes the big mistake that any critic. Um, is, is instantly deemed as you, you're a nationalist or you're a Nazi. Right. It's a big issue in Germany, especially. As soon as you as you criticize a refugees or what's happening and uh, um, you're a Nazi, you're, you're, you're deemed a Nazi. So that's a no-go and that's terrible for every, uh, for every culture of, of discourse. But what the right... The right wing does, and that's even more harmful um, because the, the one thing is affecting free speech, but the other thing, what the right wing does is they <clears throat> somehow manage to still connect all that's wrong <clears throat> and, and creating this big smoke screen. Um, and they, they try to make it to make it seem that as, as soon as we handle the, the migration problem, or get rid of all the refugees, everything is going to be better. And that's a huge fucking lie. And I can't believe that the broad population uh, is still is still buying it. It's still working. And it's exactly, exactly the same what happened in the 1930s in Europe. Because the right wing is, and of course Hitler, his, his biggest cue was to, to make people believe as soon as we got rid of the Jews and what they do with this country and whatsoever, everything is going to get better. And people are desperate now. I mean, it seems, it seems paradoxical because we were having a better life than every generation before us, but still people are feeling insecure and... And what and whatsoever. So what happens if you instrumentalize those those refugees? If if you mark them as the cause of all the things that are going wrong? Yeah, what's what's going what's what's going to happen? What's going to happen? I'm, I'm not saying that. I mean, in Germany, that, that, that I, I think I'm saying. Is that what you're thinking? I think we're we're talking about you're you're across the pond. I mean, this is completely different. Like anytime I hear someone start talking about Trump's a Nazi, I can't even look at you seriously. Like just like when people start saying this right wing and Nazi conflation thing, it's just so. But ridiculous. that's what I said. That's people that's the wrong thing. Oh, he just he just said, he just he said, said Trump is a Nazi. That's the wrong thing. He he that's just not said that that's either. Yeah, he just said that that's wrong. But okay, but but M Death fan, you, you you alluded to something that was I couldn't believe that you were this honest. Are you saying that the biggest issue that you have with the migrants and just in, uh, immigration, illegal immigration, whatever you want to call it in general, is because it will change the voting landscape of our country? Did you, you never say heard that? that before? Huh? Is that is that the first time you've ever heard such a thing? No, it's not the first I mean, time. In the 2016 Democratic Party platform to naturalize illegal immigrants in this country. It's available. You can go read it. That's what they want to do. Now, what do you think that will do to the voting in this country? How will that change the country? <laughs> okay, so you're not necessarily worried about uh, these guys throwing rocks at, at, at you know, $60 million helicopters. You're worried well, and that they're going to peacefully come instance. in and vote Democrat. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm saying that's the overall arching, like, uh, um, what's the word? Um, the way I think about the – that's typically how people on the right think about the entire issue of illegal immigration as a whole. And this specific instance for this migrant caravan coming up, I mean, they're bust. You saw what they did as a mil- the Mexican military. They just basically shoved through, through rocks. I mean, these people are not peaceful. Can we agree? Some of them are not. It's so, probably 70% let's, men. Let's say that that's true. They're five. Seventy uh, percent toxic men. You believe in toxic masculinity? Very good. Okay. <laughs> well, let's, say, let's say they. Well, say that's like, they are desperate. What's that? Let's say. Let's agree on that they are desperate and they have nothing to lose. 
that doesn't equal that, that they are violent by nature and, and keep continuing to be violent. They're once throwing they're throwing rocks at people and busting through barricades. What would you call that? I mean, it's, it's violence, man. It's violence. Well, I mean, if you're well coming into a, Peter, if you're a I refugee, mean... Let me, let me say one thing here. If you're a refugee and you're looking to escape your homeland because of unbelievable tyranny, and you get outside of your border to the first country that's willing to take you in, should you be happy to be there? That They're willing to take care of you? They even offered asylum to these people. But some of these guys are still throwing rocks and being violent with them. I mean, it doesn't make any sense to me. Does it make sense to you? I think that's a one-sided picture because you have no clue what they experienced on the way here. And I, I, I assume it's not being um, being welcomed with open arms. Would you do such a thing? Yeah, but I... I sure, yeah, yeah. If, if, if you take anything from me and I take the last, last money I own and I have, and I'm living even with my children... And I have nothing to lose. I will do anything to get to to a better place. So, if I think that helps, I mean, I'm, I, yeah. I mean, would you be peaceful about it, or would you be violent about as it? As long as I, I could possibly be, yes. I mean, I would. I would too. Peter, I my kids Peter, me. Peter, st- guys, my kids hold on, Peter, stop it. You would not get violent and start throwing rocks and that. You would not do it. Stop. No, no he's oh, saying if there was a there reason was why a, he couldn't get was, his family to safety and it required violence. Yeah, but that's, that's, that's right, not... Right, that's, week, there was a, well, just listen to me for a short time. There was a trial in, in Hungary because refugees were passing the borders and uh, a woman, a journalist, was kicking them and was kicking a father who was carrying his child and make him fall and trip. So the child... Um, Got injured, by the way, uh, during the process, and uh, she was accused of whatever, and, and there was a trial, and it was all over the media because it was I remember that a scandal because this this father he's a coach of a football team in Iran, the, the the most peaceful guy you can imagine, okay, and she felt entitled because he uh, he was running to the border to kick him. And make him trip. So perfect. I, I, you see, I remember. I'm I, sh- about. I showed. No, I, I actually. Remember that. I showed oh, sorry. Hold on. Hold on, man. Hold on, man. I showed sorry that video. Yeah. And it was a terrible video. So you, what you're saying, Peter, is that's what these people are experiencing. Yeah, multiply it by ten or by hundred. You know, and let's okay. see how, how peaceful you stay. That that's my point. All right. Okay, well, no, I'll, I'll give you that one. I'm deaf fan. I mean, would you agree with that? If these people are being treated in this dehumanizing fashion over and over again, and they're already in a stress situation, don't you think that that would probably instigate some violent reaction? I mean, we're sitting here talking about, you know, hypotheticals. We don't know the, situa- the, the, the specifics, right? All I'm saying, so you're talking about one's isolated story where someone got kicked. I don't know what you're talking about. I, never, I don't know that story. I'm looking at the... Go look at migrants throw rocks at U.S. helicopter. Look it up right now. Why is that important? They're throwing rocks at a U.S. helicopter. Well, I think well, you well, know well, as well, well as I do that a rock isn't going to do a damn thing to a U.S. helicopter. They're also throwing them at the, the Mexican uh, military. They're busting. Through. I mean, okay, do you have, have seen this stuff? No, I, I, I've seen I some of it, but do you have context for why that's happening? Can I do this or No, do you? No, so it, it, it doesn't look good. <laughs> I, I, well, I mean, don't don't you think that that people have reasons for why they're doing it, or are they just randomly what? throwing rocks at people? Look at the video, and you tell me. I'm looking at a long. two. I'm looking at a two minute forty seven second video. I, I mean, I, I'm willing. I'm willing to look at it. I'm just saying that it seems to me that you're making assumptions about why these people are doing it. It's like it's like. It's it's interesting, like it when a like, when a right. hold on, I'm deaf man. When a police shooting happens, right? I as a black person go, well, look, he just shot the guy. He was unarmed. You, you know what my white friends usually tell me? They usually say, well, oh, I know. They go, well, we have to wait till the report comes out so that we can see the exact context of what actually happened. And I go, I don't need to see shit. I'm looking at the video right now. Mm-hmm. I mean, I'm deaf fan. Now, let me ask you a question. This is going to be a little dangerous. Have you ever said that in response to a police shooting? 
if I ever said, uh, actually, you know, I'm, you'd be surprised uh, how I think about the police, buddy. But I'm, 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 I'm just, I'm asking you. I'm not assuming. It depends. I mean, and I guess it depends on the on the situation. I guess what was that one with? Um... <sighs> there's a I whole mean, bunch of them in our country. So yeah, I... there's a whole bunch of them, right? There's a whole bunch of them. But um, if it depends, it depends on the situation. We have to talk about which one. I guess I, I've, I've said it when I've seen it when it really, really appeared that the guy that got shot was being in a situation was in a situation where he deserved it but i but conversely i don't always i don't always side on the cops side no No, that's not that's not my point what i'm trying to argue is there are times when you will look at a video and the optics look terrible but you will pull back and say well we gotta look we gotta we gotta find more information before we make a judgment so all i'm saying is how come you're not applying it to this to this situation i think we're both not i think we both aren't we both don't really know because we're just basically absorbing information that we're seeing on the television. Well, but on, the, on difference the, between, the difference between the difference between the uh, we, we, well, we both have that in common. We both don't know. The difference is I'm not attaching a a moral judgment on these people either way. I'm not saying they're justified or not because I don't have enough information. But it seems to me that you're attaching a certain moral judgment on these people's character when you just admitted you don't understand the context of why they were doing what they were doing. I'm just saying, like, well, this comes back to the previous thing we said. Like, I'm okay with them coming through and granting asylum as per law of the land to try to plead their case to see if they'll be approved for it and be vetted. That's fine. Now, if they're going to get there and they start being, you know, rowdy, and the reason the mills go down there is because there's so many people. I mean, right. you know, the border, the border security can't do, take care of that many people. So you're going to need to bring in, like, say, the National Guard or whoever. I'm, I'm thinking it's the National Guard. It would make sense that it would be uh, to come in there to kind of help to, to, to keep the situation uh, peaceful. Uh, and I'm sure they will. I mean, our, our military is some of the best trained military in the world. And you know, We have the, we have the best. Have, no. We're the best. <laughs> yeah. so far. We're the best. You know we're the best. <laughs> Here's my nationalism. I know, listen, I know for a fact that we are the best. There's no de- no debate. Forget it. Okay. All right. All right. All right. Uh, so, uh, Peter M. Death Fan, thank you guys very much. This is exactly the intent of the show. Mm-hmm. Um, this is exactly the reason we're doing pleasure. I enjoyed it. It was, it was very good. Yeah, me too, man. I, I literally just finished work and I hit refresh on the YouTube channel and I saw it live so I just jumped right out of work into this. It was, it was and interesting. By the way, we got active duty folks down there, um, M Death, not National Guard anymore. Okay. But, uh, oh, and, and you can be an active duty National Guard guy. Yeah. Can't you? Uh yeah, yeah, you yeah, can it's, it's not all weekend warriors. Which is a good thing. All right. Good job. But anyway, the military will take care. But but we, but we know uh, if the militia doesn't take care you, of it, you, you never addressed this. What what's your what's your take on on what I said that this is a test run about how we will handle the climate refugee things that will eventually uh, take place in the future? Are you asking Vin or me? Vin. Uh, well, I, 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 I think climate change is a very real thing. Um, I don't know how. Look, I always tell you guys, I'm not a scientist. Um, but when the the little research that I've done on the science, and when I hear the rhetoricians on both sides, um, it's clear to me that climate change is a real issue. And so it's not inconceivable to me that we could have that type of refugee crisis. And I am extremely concerned about the way that we're we're handling um, people that are seeking asylum or in a, or in an emergency situation. The United States is a large, very extremely large landmass as far as how much of the world we own in proportion to how much of the world other countries own. Um, so I'm very concerned about how we're treating other people. Which you know, Peter, this has been a theme with us from the beginning, where I'm concerned about every single human life, and so. We have a penchant for dehumanization, and right now, if it were to happen, God forbid, I am not very confident that we would handle it properly. Um, and I, I think right now, if it happened tomorrow, we'd have a lot of dead people. That's just how I feel right now. Yeah. See, see, see that's the thing I have a problem with because because in the in the EU, it's a big issue that um, this this kind of uh, hypocrisy. And what I mean by that is. Um, 
everyone in EU and in the Middle EU is saying, okay, uh, the border countries, it's their responsibility to uh, open up some refugee camps and do the, the vetting process properly. Of course, that's nearly undoable because there are hundreds of thousands of people stranded there and it costs a lot of resources and money and it's a, it's a real burden on those countries. And, and that's the point. Don't believe for a second that those countries who uh, demand such a thing are giving them any money to help them with this big issue. They are not. Hey, so can I jump in really quick here? I got, I, I got to get going, but I just wanted to say one thing really quick uh, uh, just to kind of to, to answer you as far as the whole climate change refugee thing goes. First of all, we are a very generous nation. We're the most, very, most generous nations in the world. I mean, you can see the aid that we give other countries. Well, other countries give aid like we do. And we, we, we've done a lot to, to help people. But we also have to realize evil, true evil, does exist in this world. Just because we live isolated in the U.S., we don't really get to see it a lot. It really does exist, and we do have to vet these people coming in because, you know, this is, these people no could question. eventually be living in and around our family. And Absolutely. that's, again... No, I'm not questioning, it, but, but, but it seems everybody is... Uh, another country should do it. It's, well, they're all pushing it to the next one. Right, he's, yeah, he's, somebody should take them in. Yes, yeah, somebody should wet them, but it's not us. Not 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 to uh, not extending to some degree because if they're coming by the thousands, it's not doable. Let the national guard get there. If they're coming family by family, yeah, that's okay with us. Right, but things aren't that organized. Uh, how how should that be possible for refugees to organize themselves to just get in at that certain amount that is comfortable for everyone? Yeah, M. Def. Pray, pray, pray. pray. <laughs> That's right. You got to convert. You got to convert Peter, and then start praying with us. Everything will turn out fine. <laughs> yeah, I'm glad Sorry's doing better, by the way, man. Sorry, I'm glad you're, you're you're feeling better and everything worked out okay. Yeah, she's good. Check out our channel. Her channel, My Story Life. Okay, guys. Uh, thank you, Peter. Thank you, M. Death fan. I gotta go watch football hey, here. Fun. Here are my final thoughts, ladies and gentlemen. As we've just demonstrated, we are able to uh, disagree stridently. And as we disagree stridently, we actually find the areas where we actually agree with each other. So there was a lot of overlap, actually, between what Peter thought and what M. Death Fan thought. I thought they were going to be on the opposite of everything. But there was common ground. And then we branched out and made our, our separate points. As far as my original thought process, can you be friends with someone with whom you politically disagree? Here's my final thought on that. Look, if you say no, you are attaching a moral uh, implication on your friend's character if he votes or she votes different from you politically. And here's what I would say. You may be right. They may be a morally incorrigible person if they vote for somebody for some particular thing. But what's the situation there? If you truly love your friend, wouldn't the best thing to do to be to be more of a friend to that person and demonstrate to them that the, the error of their ways to your actions and your words to win them over? How is losing you as a friend going to benefit them or change their minds the next time there's a midterm election or a general election? Those are my final thoughts. Love your neighbor, love your friend, and vote, y'all. Then out. Sorry, out. Gone.